Hello folks, here's some Drake Hollow gameplay for you. A new game from the makers of the excellent roguelite The Flame in the Flood. Now, this is already out on Xbox, but I'm playing in the upcoming PC version, so thanks to the devs for giving me advanced access to that. Now, this is single or multiplayer and has exploration, crafting, base building and base defending. Plus there's a bit of ooblets about this in that you can find and grow new villagers who are like Pokemon, only turnips? So I've played this for a couple of hours already and I really like it, so I'm coming back to pretty much the beginning, about 10 minutes in, for us to get going from pretty much the start. Um, I am, well this guy, this is my fully customisable character, I've been lured into this weird world by a crow, uh, who, who is about to um, reveal to us the secrets of the shrine. Right, here we go. It looks very much like a prismatic trial crystal, but it's not. This is a shrine. Focus. See what's what. Crow's still in the background, checking us out. <laughs> Powers of the crystal. Yes, awaken, awaken, you purple bastards. Here we go. And that has cleansed our camp. Oh, hello. It's the turnip lad. Uh, yeah, so I'm thinking how to explain this game best. Um, uh, don't expect a, like a 3D version of Flame in the Flood. Uh, there is crafting in this, but uh, this is definitely not a difficult permadeath roguelite. Uh, this is a very forgiving game, and while you do go, get to go out exploring, you're always returning to camp um, to focus on that. Uh, this is about grounded, I guess. I mean, that it's young people having an adventure and building up bases and fighting off weird creatures and all that. Uh, but grounded is far more fighty. In Drake Hollow, you do do less of that, but we are going to be able to do some at some point soon. There you are. You, you big dog bastard. Ooh, right, here we go. So I've got my first melee weapon. Uh, I can block. Like that. Or I can just do some good old fashioned tonking. Ooh. May need to block at this point. And. Huh. <laughs> wow. Superb. And you do have a little bit of a, bit of a combo attack like that. All very mercenary. Uh, let's see. Now I need to actually talk to the, the wise old crow. So this here is our camp. It's, it, we're going to build this up and have all sorts of furniture and stuff like that as we go. But we'll need to do a lot of levelling up. And first of all, we'll need to talk to Crow. Crow? Right. So the, the drakes are the like the Pokemon star, um, type lads, the turnips. Kind souls, unfortunately they've had a rough go. Ain't what they used to be. Uh, the... Those terminers the note mentioned uh, made a real mess of things, so they're a little skittish around newcomers with a penchant for brawling. Uh, you're going to need to do some legwork to earn their trust. The drakes are plenty hungry and thirsty, hibernating. Um, um, anyway, yes, because the land's blighted. So I'll just skip past a bit of this because we will be. There's, there's a lot of like um, early tutorial type stuff where we build up the starting of of the camp, um, and we so we need, we need to build we need to build a cauldron by first of all collecting some crafting materials. Uh, all you have to do here is just literally just tonk with a stick, uh, not forgetting the stump, and you'll get a bunch of probably random type stuff. We can also gather all kinds of other stuff as well. And the starting island is this. So we can at the moment stick to these islands. We can't really um, island hop just yet because we don't have the means, because this, um, this purple stuff, is the ether sea. Fracking ether sea, um, which will hurt you. Um, but you can get through it, and we'll discover ways to do that. And there's all sorts of other islands as well, which we can visit in due course. But yes, now we do need to get some stuff. We have actually got enough lumber now, but let's have a bit of a extra tonk for luck. Also, ha! There we go. Right, so let's go back here. Let's start building our cauldron. I'll put that quite near the centre. Uh, this is where the, uh, the Pokemon lads will actually eat from. We have to keep them alive by feeding them keeping them watered, and also entertained. They will die otherwise. They also do all the building for us. They are very good at it. They're very fast. And he's gone. <laughs> Hidden behind a rock. Nice. So, we'll, we'll be able to add stuff to that soon, but first of all, we'll, we'll need to talk to Crow. Nice work, kid. Use the cauldron. And find juice boxes and baneberries, and then we can put that into the cauldron. Fair enough. Well, we've already got some stuff. Um, these over here are baneberries, these eye stalks over here. But juice boxes we will need to do a bit of exploration for. We can't find them on this middle island, so let's 
Well, actually, let's get some more of these over here. Let's um, go to this island here because that's close by. You will notice um, this, this game is very good to us, very good to the channel, because look, it's got bogs. Um, you can hit the bogs and stuff will come out. Not poo, you'll be pleased to know. Oh, ah! Also, oh! Get got. Oh, our first quote shard. Um, if you get certain um, shards of stuff like that, you will be able to feed up your um, turnip lads um, and turn them into um, older lads. And we'll explain that as we go. So I do want to turn this into a series, by the way. And this is a, a good game I could turn into a you know several videos rather than just the one. So do if enough people do watch and enjoy this, uh, well, yeah, but just leave a like and leave a comment and all the usual things to let me know you're out there, and also to let the YouTube algorithm um, to actually recommend the video to other people. Otherwise, it won't, and we'll all be stuck here with egg on our face. Now, cars are good things, like um, very um, seven days in that Yatonka car, and stuff comes out. Oh, juice boxes. Loads and loads of juke boxes. And um, juice boxes. Whilst we're here, always be gathering. I've still only got this stick, but we will be getting better stuff as we go. And just look at the inventory. At the moment, we've got. Oh, I've picked up an arrow somewhere. I think that must have just, just happened. Uh, we'd. Uh, there are ranged weapons in this, which you use using. Um, do using your right click if you're on PC. And box tonk. Oh, shot! All right. There are a lot of buildings where you'll find stuff on the roof as well. Um, but there's usually, like, barrels to indicate that you can get on there. Oh, the all-important bags. And I've also just broken the glass. Right, so we can now get back... Oh, hang on, I'm not, I'm not going back, am I? I'm actually going... I'm going towards this spooky old house. Well, let's leave that for the time being, because I've, I've seen a bog I want to destroy. Ha! Ceramics. Ha! Car. Oh, also some cattails. Ah, good old among trees. <laughs> so yes, you have got a, a dodge attack. Hup, like that. If you want that. Uh, it's, it's very kind. You just have to like them. Um, uh, this is like you just, you just tap shift to sprint. You don't have to hold it down, which I'm very grateful for. Because it does free up your fingers to do all your dodging and dashing and all over the place type stuffs. Right, okay, so now I have an inventory full of Bainbury's and jukeboxes. I'm going to keep on calling them juke boxes instead of juice boxes, aren't I? <laughs> anyway. So we're luring the lads out. They can smell it. The delicious eye stalks. Mmm. Oh, he's got quite the arm. <laughs> right, he's chomping down on some scran. Uh, and now he's happy. Look at him. Cheerful little bugger. So these are our first two lads. I'm not sure what to call these. Drakes, aren't they? Yes, that's right. I, I shall, I'll, I'll start calling them Drakes now, because I know people get annoyed when I pronounce it Pokemon. <laughs> anyway, so yes, they've also got um, ex, um, like um, buffs they can give me. Uh, and because we've now got those lads sorted, our camp XP has increased. All is good. Uh, and we haven't got quite to the stage yet, but um, as soon as we get to a certain point in the intro, um, it will allow you to play multiplayer. Um, the start of it is single player only. The Drakes weren't always like this, their hearts are the same, but their minds aren't. Not since the Terminator came along and twisted the magic of this place to their will. With your with help, we can restore the Drakes, even send you home once they get their magic back. So first of all, yes, um, it's just telling us now that we need to let them sleep and get them entertained. So we need to build beds and poppets. Beds for sleep, poppets for entertainment. Right, let's see what we can do about that. We need for this twigs, leaf bundles and charms. We don't have many twigs. It's That's a case of tonky more trees and same with leaves. Charms though are a bit of a weirden in that and they, these lads, these drakes will generate them over time and you have to interact with them. Yeah, come back! This lad is busy actually gathering. Look, he's actually feeding the cauldron all on his own which is handy. Oh no, he's just eating now, that's fine. Because they do actually go out and gather stuff all by themselves. If you if you leave stuff on the ground, oh, in fact, they will actually gather stuff from berry from berry bushes as well. Ooh, ah, uh. oops, <laughs> go on, tonk him. There we go. I was focused a bit too much on the tree there. So yes, those lads, um, the bad lads, will pop out of. Oh, look, I just saw some harvesting going on. So yes, it does use up the bushes when they harvest them. Right, anyway, so we now need to get some charms again, so let's again try and interact with you. Hello! Uh, oh, I oh, yes, let's get his buff so we can actually get better items. And that has actually um, relieved him of his charms. 
And now we also, I should point out, this is basically a chest over here, the depot. And we can bung stuff in there. It looks like they've already gathered seven Bainbury's and put them into the into the stump. You're doing the same by the looks of it. Um, so you've got the buff of critical striking trees and brambles, which ain't very exciting, to be honest. But we have got some more charms now, so hopefully we should now be able to do some bed making. Yes. We'll only be able to make one for now because we need more twigs. But we can also make a couple of poppets, which requires upholstery scrap, cattails and charms. So let's put down a couple of poppets. Uh, we'll need to get more twigs now for the bed. They'll sort them out. At the top right is the status of the camp and the, 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 uh, the drakes. So there's enough water, there's enough food, but there's not enough entertainment. Um, uh, the, the numbers of the stockpile, essentially. And over here, there's the magpie. Let's go and sp say hello to the magpie. Um, it's basically a shop uh, for trading purposes. Right, so yes, um, the currency here is spoons, believe it or not. <laughs> oh, it sort of is anyway. So I can sell stuff on my inventory here to get to make more spoons. I've got seven already, and then I can buy stuff with them here. Not a huge amount we can really do at the moment. There's no, there's no real point. We may as well gather it all ourselves. And that stock replenishes every day, because there is a day-night cycle, and it is getting towards the evening now. And another part of this game is that you will get raided every so often. You'll get tonked up the bum by those evil creatures. Um, you'll generally get like it's basically like a wave of enemies. Um, and the moment I'm, the amount I've played in the game so far, um, I've only had that experience a couple of times. It happens like not overly often, um, and it was not hugely difficult. I mean, um, I suspect it might get harder as the camp gets um, more evolved. And that was only um, some rather meager stuff. Let's go up in the air. I think we need to get up there. Just out of interest. Have we got enough twigs? No, we don't. So we will need to hit some trees. Well, let's get the pink trees. Ha! There was actually there was actually some twigs in that lot. So that's good. But whilst we're here, let's make hay whilst the sun... Well, it doesn't exactly shine. It's going down. It's going down. Boop, 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 boop. Right, good stuff. Let's go into the house. Let's see if Norman Bates is in there. Spooky house. It's actually very empty, this house. Just a bit of a loot gasm. Hopefully we'll find... Ooh. Hopefully we'll find a new weapon. I don't think. Oh, I have. I've picked up a, a waffle iron. At some point, I've picked up a waffle iron. <laughs> Let's have a look at my inventory, actually. Yeah, the stick has very bad stats. Look at that. 11, 7, 5, 9, um, we're losing durability on it as well. Uh, the Waffle Iron is basically twice as good, so let's keep that equipped. There's some amazing weapons. The very first weapon I got in my first playthrough was um, this gigantic hammer. It was brilliant. It was just the biggest bloody thing. Comically oversized. Nothing in here. Oh dear. This, this, this might actually be... Huh. Feels like it's already been looted. Or maybe... Maybe just random. Maybe in different playthroughs, it's uh, the loot is random. I think the loot is randomised because I, I definitely didn't get a waffle iron last time. <laughs> oh, shall I, oh, cut some currency, some quid. Uh, uh, oh, here's something we haven't had before. This is useful. Skull caps, good for crafting some things later on. Ha! Waffle iron. Right, I think, I think we're good to go. I think we've pretty much explored all that. There'll be stuff around the other side of the island. It's getting very dark now. A little alarming. Right, let's build a second bed. The lads are asleep. That one is not able to sleep on a bed, so it's going to get a bit pissy, if you're not careful. Here we go. I spy a poppet. Or two. Right, here we go. Let's visit the crow. Crow! Look at that, they grew up so fast. So, as you may have realised, supplies are limited. So, you're a bit trapped, um, this is unfixable, you can build your way out of this one. Take the schematic, you can use it to unlock the ancient and arcane art of building a curio workshop. And this is this is very good, this is very good news indeed, because we'll finally be able to um, get off the island by creating a kind of charmy type thing. Right. So, we've got a schematic. Uh, and it's also given us the ability to um, have this... It's basically unlocked. It's, uh, it's unlocked the building thing, to, ready to be unlocked, if you see what I mean. 
Even if you collect more schematics now, you won't be able to unlock anything else because it ha the game hasn't given us yet. That you have to wait until you've leveled up the camp a bit more to actually access that. Here we go. <laughs> I just realised how badly I explained that, but shush. In the meantime, let's just be hitting this tree down. Always been eating the twigs. Right, so let's have a bit of a crafty pose. So this is only for crafting um, these curios. Um, at the moment we've got four things we can do. We haven't got enough stuff for the apparition charm or the waypoint charm. But we can make healing salve and more importantly the ether ward. We have just enough shards and sh also some shoelaces as well. This will allow us to cross the ether sea, essentially. And once you've crafted a uh, curio, I keep on calling them charms, um, once you've crafted a curio on the bench, you can also craft them away from the bench. It's Right, so let's do that with the healing salve as well. Right, so I can toggle which um, which ward or salve, or whatever, by pressing three. I'll want that. I can also toggle with that for your weapon. And my number two button will eventually be ranged weaponry. Right, let's go back to Crow. Ha! Right, here we go. Um, climb that lighthouse and have a look for stuff. Get for hibernating any more new drakes and schematics. So now things are getting a bit more open. But yeah, this is still technically the intro, uh, in that we haven't yet got onto the whole stuff about. Well, it seems it. I think the intro basically finishes when multiplayer is unlocked, uh, which is quite soon now. I think we've got to just do a thing. I think I think it comes after the lighthouse bit. So let's have a bit of a, a look see. So this is the first island that we actually explored. That's weird. Hmm. One of the islands are hmm, on different playthroughs. The islands may be located differently. So there's a bit of a rogue light about this. Eh, anyway, yeah, well, just because on the previous game the lighthouse was behind a great big rocky thing. This time it's behind this um, garage. Unless I'm going completely mad, I won't put it past me. Right. Anyway, so now to actually cross this, I'll show you what happens if you don't um, have any protection. You literally have five seconds to death. Now, death isn't a huge inconvenience in this game, but anyway, if I have my crystal activated, I have 15 seconds to do whatever the hell I like. I am parting the Dead Sea, <laughs> yeah, so to speak. Anyway, more cattails whilst we're here. Just make sure that we stay out of the water. So there may be enemies around. Uh, let's go straight. Oh, in fact, oh, piss. Here we go. Yeah, a couple of light tonks later. Just check he hasn't got any treasure. It is definitely always worth killing them for the treasure. Sometimes they have crystal shards, which will let you, um, say, un um, improve your drakes. Ooh, I see a tower over there. Ooh. Uh oh, hang on. Something's up there. Mm. Oh, missed. Ooh. It's okay, got him. No treasure off him as well. Disappointing. Ah, this island contains stone, which is good. And because different islands, I mean, look at this deer island on the left, and um, different islands have different raw materials. Like, this has loads of stuff. Well, it doesn't actually say stone on that. Oh well. And you can also see other stuff as well. Like, that one's got nothing particularly interesting. Uh, this one's got seeds. Oh my god, yes, this is actually. The layout of these islands are completely different to um, my previous playthrough. Huh. Excellent. Uh, huh. And so we, what we're doing here is um, we will be going to the top of the, ta um, the lighthouse just for getting some stuff, but there's plenty of stuff like hidden on roofs and things like that. I've just skipped to the bottom of the lighthouse, but huh. oh well. <laughs> Very important glowstone shards. So let's plot up. Schematic. Uh, we can't put that to use yet. A page from the Journal of Noble Mason. Uh, <laughs> well, you can read that if you want. That feels different as well. Right. Up we go. And gaze into the light, my son. That's a gaze. There we go. Takes a while. Noise. 
feels the islands are laid out a bit more linearly in this playthrough. Before it was, it was a bit more surrounded. Anyway, so we now have found some hibernating drakes. So on the next island along we'll be... Oh god, there's... That's, oh god, there's not more for miles away. Oh god. Right, so yes, we need to go to just pop over to the next island. Oh, bad news! Um, better get back to camp. Oh, bloody hell! Oh, okay, we will actually have to do that. I didn't actually notice that in my previous playthrough. That's a, there's a raid about to happen. Um, I don't know if this game has fall damage. I don't think it does. <laughs> Yay, okay. Right, we do need to get back to camp, sadly. Uh, can't really see much more trove around this side of the island. Alright, so, yeah. Get our crystal on. And let's get back. So, yeah, there will be a raid starting... Oh, shit, yeah, there it is. It says on the right now. Um, I think it's deliberately doesn't give you enough time to get back in this case. I think it's trying to, like, indicate what happens if things go a bit wrong. Shit, look, there were four lads attack... Oh, bloody hell. Ugh. And they're attacking my workbench! My curio workbench! You little monsters. Right, I'm gonna get you. Ah, got back in time. You really have to rush. Right, there'll also be a big lad. Oh, actually, no, there isn't a big lad this time. Okay. I think last time I had two small ones and a really big lad, but this time... Oh, there we go. Multiplayer is now unlocked. So I think it's now it's shown as the basics of the game. Oh, they, oh he's got a prezzy. Gives a prez. Gives a prez. Once you've finished eating. I can wait. Obtain gift. Also got my charms from him. Tiger Eye Shard. Ooh. So different um, drakes have different uh, crystal types for you to upgrade them with. Uh, don't have anything to upgrade you with. Um, where's the other one? Hang on, let's use it in spec mode. Actually, that's not in spec mode. That's the wrong button. Um, where's the other lad? Oh, they're, they're right there. Okay. I think this was the other one. Ah, give crystal. Here we go. So I've also got 15 charms. So I've got one... Okay, so he's green, so he needs jade shards. So he need. I've given him one, so he needs four more of the jade shards, and he'll actually grow up. Which will be very good indeed, because it'll help, help level up our base. I don't need your buff. Right, let's see what the, the crows... <laughs> Rock. See what you say now. You've proven it, no doubt. You've got what it takes. Here's what's going to happen. You're going to rebuild this place. Find a schematic out there, use it to get building. Once you build things up a bit, that should ca catch the Terminus eye, draw them out. You rebuild, take care of the Terminer, and that should snap the drakes out of their funk. Get their magic back. And then you can go home! Woohoo! Here's a little gift to get you started. Fire up this apparition charm if you need to scoot back to camp in a rush. Thank you very much, Crow. You're most kind. So I've got a few different types of charms now. I'll stick to my ether world, because that's one, the one I'll probably need to use next. So then we get set big, fat, juicy quests um, on the top left, or the middle left. Uh, reach camp level 4, current level 1. That's going to take a long time. Um, and then, yeah. We need to get to level 2 just so we can build the village, the yoga ball, the well, and the bed. So yeah, that's a whole thing. Um, but yes, I'm hopefully we'll pick this up again in another video, because I really want to play on and show you more of this game, because it really is rather cool. And say so it's also um, a multiplayer game, as you've seen, so it's um, something that you can... I think it'd be, I think it'd be a lot of fun in multiplayer, but you know, let's just stock our cauldron. That's more like it. Chow down, lads! You deserved it! Ooh, go away, you creepy little turnip. Anyway, thanks for watching. Do subscribe to the channel to be notified when new stuff goes live, including, hopefully, new episodes of this. And check me out on Buy Me A Coffee or Patreon if you want to support the channel and keep us going, finding all the best indie games out there. Uh, bye for now.